guys, can you hear me? Yeah? All right, perfect. Let me start with the prayer. Namami Dhanvantari Madhi Devam Surasurahi Vandita Pada Padmam Loki Jararu Bhaimrat Yanasham Tata Ramesham Nivida Vashadunam all right, so uh, we're going to do mental disorders in Ayurveda and um, we're going to look at some of the herbs and some of the treatment aspects of Manasika Rogas in Ayurveda today. All right, so how many of you have, uh, have ever come across somebody with a Manasika condition? Have any of you... Um, either examined or seen somebody with a manasika disorder with any kind of manasika dis yes you do okay anybody else if you do then it becomes uh, you know the, the the class kind of makes more sense to you guys if you don't as we go uh, into the class you will probably realize that this whole uh, concept of manasika chikitsa even with patients, with clients who have physical doshas, physical ailments, there's some kind of manasa disturbance that you can see. It needn't be a mental con disorder or it needn't be a condition where they have a psychiatric problem or they have a, you know, a, a psychological problem. But even, um, you know, a very normal person who has a physical ailment will have some kind of an imbalance with the manasika doshas right so uh, today we're going to talk about manasika rogas and about what you can do the first aspect of manasika roga is that there are many different um, drain there are many different kinds of manasika rogas uh, you know right from someone who has sleep disturbances to someone who um, has something as simple as an attachment towards something or is greedy about something you know simple things that um, every human being has as a behavioral pattern that is also explained under a Manasika Roga chapter in Ayurveda. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have a Manasika condition, but it just means that these are all aspects of Manasika Gunas that would later on, um, you know, be the cause of some kind of a Vyadi, some kind of a disorder, right? The first uh, and foremost, yes, that's, that's exactly what I was, you know, trying to... Uh, tell you in the beginning of the class most of these manasika uh, conditions most of these symptoms most of these become causes of diseases later on so as we go into the class you realize that most of the clients that you've seen would have some you know would show some kind of a symptom some kind of a pattern that we're talking about today right so manasika disorders are basically a wide range of conditions that affect your mind, that affect your mood, that affect the way you think and your behavior, right? So anything that contributes to your mood, to your thinking, to your behavior, to your attitude, all that will become uh, causes, will become symptoms of your manasa disorders. Now, the first aspect of it is mother, moha and uh, delusion right so mother just basically means intoxication it translates as intoxication now the thing with this mother is that mother can be of two aspects one it can be a physical uh, roga where you have intoxication that happens because of you know say alcohol or because of some kind of a drug that you have um, consumed and that can lead to physical symptoms that you see and that becomes a uh, that becomes a physical vyadi right which you treat now same mother is also considered as a manasa disorder as a manasika roga uh, which can happen because of you know like for instance people who have um, uh, who are addicted to alcohol who are addicted to drugs uh, they show symptoms of like withdrawal symptoms if they don't get their, uh, you know, they don't get the drink or they don't get the drug that they use. They have that, um, they have these uh, mood swings, they have, uh, they show a wide range of symptoms that you see. 
at that point that mother becomes a mental condition that becomes a manasika disorder mother intoxication can happen because of another aspect which is um you know there are people who actually uh, uh, who have a lot of money and they have they have that intoxication where um they feel that they feel that all that money uh, you know kind of gets to their head right or people who think that their beauty and uh, whatever they have as a you know in terms of um i don't know if you guys have ever read this but in the olden days if you if you if any of you have read these um uh, mythological stories and um, you know there are a lot of these uh, stories that are there in india so these olden days the kings they had this mother because of all the wealth because you know they could they could just possess whatever they wanted you know they wanted beautiful women they could have that if they wanted alcohol if they wanted wealth if they wanted a particular kingdom so that money that that thing that power that they had that kind of got to their head and that was one form of manasika disorder right then there's something called moha which is more like a bewilderment where you're in a dream like state you're kind of um you're kind of you know your perceptions are altered what you you believe that what you see what you hear what you actually think of you you believe that that is right that is a uh, and that is an avastha that is called ma- moha then you have something called atatva bhivinivesha which is you completely you've wrapped yourself around a false idea around a false perception um where you're actually you know kind of hallucinating and you you kind of uh, assume things and so on now these are general categories of diseases of the manas of your intellect um also these are conditions that you will see as symptoms in certain uh, very serious uh, mental disorders like for instance uh, people who suffer from schizophrenia right they have this atatva bhinivesha in on a very high level it's 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 a level where all their uh, manasika doshas have completely gone haywire there's a complete imbalance along with that their physical doshas also have an imbalance and that becomes a very um, a very you know high end state of how badly the doshas are impacted and there they have this atatva bhinivesham on a completely different level <laughs> um uh, you know um, there are there are some clients like i've had a few a couple of patients who have come to me they start talking to you and they start giving you these um you know they start telling you stories about their families and about how closely they are attached to people in their families and how you know they have daughters in law who do everything for them they have family you know they basically build this entire story about how happy they are about how everything's worked out really well and then i had this one patient who who kept talking about how happy she was and then suddenly she just she just completely you know uh, burst out crying and she was just going through so much of a trauma at home that she was kind of living in a world where she was, she believed that this is how her family was this is how her thing was and she didn't come to me for a manasika roga chikitsa she came to me because she was suffering from arthritis right so there are different kinds of uh, symptoms that you see and um, when you start interacting with clients you can kind of put all these uh, categories that we're going to talk about today and um, you you can you can see how you can help them out in each of those right now in western um, medicine and modern medicine uh, this mother is not really considered as a direct problem unless there is a chemical dependency you know when there is a drug uh involved when there's you know like alcohol involved when there's some kind of a uh you know there's some kind of an intoxication that's completely based on chemical dependency which will therefore be a a, a social issue which will therefore be a health issue and so on and um so what we basically do is when we have a client who suffers from say something as simple as stress that every one of us have right you and i also have stress we are also stressed out every everybody you see today every client who comes to you you talk to them for a couple of minutes and then the next thing they tell you is they are stressed you ask anybody are you uh, are you stressed are you undergoing some kind of a stress and the answer would be yes very very rarely would someone tell you that they are not stressed and they're completely you know happy in a happy phase in life 
Now that stress can be various factors. So what is the basic thing that we advise a client who says he or she is stressed or who has a manic a problem or who has some, any kind of depression, any, anything, anything, it can be big or small or whatever. The first and foremost thing that we advise as Ayurvedic practitioners is meditation, is pranayama, is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just simple things like, you know, concentrate on your breathing, just sit and relax for a bit and so on. Now, uh, there's a completely uh, anti-yoga, anti-pranayama uh, aspect to this uh, concept when someone is intoxicated or when someone has uh, this thing because they feel that you need to, you need to go through counseling therapies where you talk about your problem and you come out of it and you don't really oppress the you know the level of stress you have or you don't merely bury your uh, symptoms and you know kind of uh, pretend you're okay because then that can lead to an outburst and that can further aggravate the problem um, the important thing over there is we don't allow a person who's undergoing a manasika uh, vyadi to suppress the vyadi or you know it's, it's not a kind of repressive therapy that we advocate but uh, you're trying to kind of help them uh, overcome that the problem and that's our basic uh, treatment module which we're going to talk about in just a bit oh yes men 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 have a completely different i think you know when we talk about this manasika um, counseling and treatment aspect in ayurveda we need to completely take two different kinds of approaches for women and for men because women i think they 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 tend to overthink and overanalyze their stress and and men like burying it and you know just uh, so if, if a guy comes to you with a problem that can be physical and you ask them if they're stressed and the answer would be yes and they kind of it's a full stop you know women kind of like it when you ask them questions and they kind of they, they kind of open up a little more easily but yes okay so then the next thing is uh, moha or bewilderment so and this is often considered um, you know, so basically, this is how the uh, how the mind functions, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you have uh, so moha is a state when you kind of have uh, inconsistent thoughts, inconsistent beliefs. Uh, your attitude is inconsistent. So uh, this is more in terms of how your uh, behavioral decisions are, how your attitude changes, and um, so it's kind of very closely connected with your desires, with, uh, you know, how the mind misleads you. So you believe uh, a person who has moha believes that something works in a certain way and, you know, their mind functions according to how they believe. It's very difficult to convince them that what they're thinking about uh, you know, is wrong. Uh, it's very difficult to convince them, even if they come to you with a physical condition and say you're giving them uh, a certain herb to consume. It's very difficult to convince them that this is how the medicine will work because they have decided they have a very different perspective of how things work for them. And um, another thing with people who have this moha is, uh, there are, you know, in, in people who have this uh, complete vata uh, disturbance that you, that along with this moha, when there's a, there's an absolute vata disturbance, they kind of snap in and out of their, um, the, the way their attitude changes. Like they actually snap in and out, you know, uh, they'll be talking to you. So I, I recently have had this patient who came to me for Navrakiri and we were doing Navrakiri for that patient. She, she's perfectly fine. She's normal. She doesn't have uh, this thing, but she has got this, um, she's, she's, she's a little, um, she's a little eccentric and she's got this, uh, she, she's very vata and she's got this way that, you know, she works. She believes that things happen in a certain way. So she'll tell me that her leg feels this way. And this is what the Masseo did. And this is how it worked. And you can actually see, even when she's talking to me, you know, you, you can make out how, you, you can kind of make out like how we examine the nadi and we can see the nadi shift right in certain people you can see the vata and pitta nadi shift 
similarly as she's talking to you you can kind of feel that that vata snapping in and out you know you can kind of feel how the attitude changes how her um, the way she talks changes and so on now uh, to a certain extent this moha is kind of um is kind of easier to control easier to manage but when it becomes the next level you know like when it becomes a state of some moha when there's complete uh, moha when there's complete bewilderment then that becomes difficult that becomes uh, difficult for you to bring under control and the kind of treatment aspects that you give would also be different right because after some moha then the next stage becomes loss of memory and uh, they are just completely they've kind of snapped out of their um, their daily existence so uh, to a certain level when more say you know uh, on a scale of 10 and it's easier for us to treat with our with counseling therapies and with ayurvedic uh, treatment so this is this is an explanation that is given in bhagavad gita how there is a classic progression that happens um, you know how initially your manas uh, kind of it is basically how a person sees an object and that person's desire towards that particular object you know they they just so badly want that particular object now this can be a physical a material uh, object like say for instance it's it's some kind of a land or some house that they've seen or a piece of ornament or it can be it can be a materialistic thing or it can be an object of desire in terms of you know a, a person a, a job anything right so the mind has this uh, liking towards a particular object that liking grows stronger uh, and stronger and then that person has a kind of attachment towards that object and this is how the basic stage of moha starts this is how your mind starts um, desiring for something and then that becomes an attachment towards that one thing once you have that attachment towards that one thing then your next the next stage of it is that you know there's immense love immense lust immense desire over that one particular aspect that one particular object and if you don't get it that leads to frustration that leads to anger that leads to um, you know a state where you will do anything to uh, you know to get that object that you have desired right when that you still don't get it when that anger reaches an extreme level when then what happens is that anger will lead to this uh, moha uh, which will then gradually progress into some moha when there's complete bewilderment and then you start you know you start thinking about your mind you know your mind starts playing tricks on you the you know, the person starts believing that they've already they already have the object or they they they've got it or you know your mind kind of starts starts taking you to different levels and then what happens is when the sammo so physically or even on a manasika level in terms of the doshas here you have a disturbance that's happening with your physical doshas as well as with your manasika dosha so your rajas and tamo doshas are completely in balance they're completely going haywire here right um and that that starts right at the beginning you know right when um when you have um, this desire for an object and then that desire when it when it starts becoming a negative thing then your rajas starts getting higher and higher your rajo dosha starts getting higher and higher and physically your vata also starts uh, you know getting disturbed because of all these emotional uh, you know the different levels of emotion that your mind is going through your vata also starts aggravating so when your when that anger and all reaches a peak if you if you ever examine a physical nadi when a person is very angry you can even do it on yourself you know when you when you get really angry examine your nadi and see how how sharp and how how your vata nadi kind of really beats you can you can feel the vata and pitta nadi you can feel that sharp um beat in the nadi 
when you're very angry and for people who are basically pitta prakriti and when they get angry their pitta nadi become it starts beating so sharply that you can actually feel the heat right so next time you you can try this on yourself when you know that you get really angry and when you you know about to have an outburst or when you're going to say things examine just keep your hand on your nadi and, and see how your vata and pitta nadi beat now that is what this does to you physically and on a mental on a manasika level your rajas raja dosha is you know getting imbalanced now finally what happens is the doshas are so badly imbalanced that after the samoha the next thing is you have loss of memory there's complete smriti vibhramsha and there's complete buddhi nasha your there's you know it's like your loss of memory and you don't remember anything and you're in in, in one total uh, you don't remember things that have happened to you you don't remember people who are associated with you nothing you know there's complete loss of memory and finally that kind of uh, that's the end you know that's that's um that's where your entire buddhi nasha happens it kind of destroys your buddhi it destroys your intellect it destroys everything so this is how this is a uh, 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 this is explained in bhagavad gita uh, you know when people this was actually explained in the olden days when you know people had this uh, extreme desire for things so this is one of those shlokas where they actually explain um, you know this is an explanation given as to why you should stay away from raga why attachment is raga so this is basically explaining why you should stay away from raga why you should stay away from attachment right now the next thing is atatva bhinivesha atatva bhinivesha is um you know where you are in a uh, completely false state you know your um your m- mind basically is hallucinating it's telling you uh, it, it's giving you these ideas and pictures that actually don't exist uh, and what we normally do is when uh, when this thing starts uh, there's there's a treatment called dhara right so the whole idea about this dhara is you're trying to uh, yeah actually i can hear that too i think someone has their uh, microphone turned on so um so this whole pro- this treatment as thing called dhara is a treatment where you make the person lie down and um or in a pot you guys can google this i i put it on the chat I put the name of the treatment on the chat you can google it. there are videos where they've actually shown you how this dhara has done so um you have a person who 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 is unwell you make them lie down on the the navrakiri the pati that you use right for your massages and all that make them lie on that bed and then there's this one pot that um that you have to hang on top of that bed and into that you pour your oil or your ghee or whatever your medicine is and then slowly you have to uh, keep moving the pot from you know to and fro and you on the forehead of the person and at the same time there's one person who massages the hands um on either side you you know there's one person who massages the hands and one person who gently massages the head and that is a process called dhara and that is the most effective treatment that can be given for most of these manasic conditions so uh, for people who who suffer from bipolar uh, disorders um from you know um schizophrenia at the starting stages for people who um uh, who have um uh, tempered uh, anger management problems for people who have uh, who are hysterical and you know different uh, based on what what one dosha is uh, aggravated you change the medicines that you put into the dhara pot right so apart from that the other thing that you have to do is uh different kinds of yoga and different kinds of pranayama which is done basically to calm the person down and you know to um to help move, remove any shroto blocks any blocks in the channels and to ensure that your prana vata kind of flow freely right that's the whole idea of doing yoga and that's the whole idea that's what we try doing with yoga practices in manasika disorders right
So, um, one of the main causes of uh, these manasika disorders is when you keep uh, when you keep oppressing your feelings, when you keep suppressing your feelings, and um, you know when when your your manas starts. It starts doing things to you because you're not sharing it out, you're not saying anything out. That can again, like I like I told you in the beginning, that can again lead to physical problems. That can, you know, uh, that can just maybe be a plain manasika uh, problem. So the basic hetus, the basic causes of these manasika disorders is when you use your sense organs inappropriately. Where you you know you're not listening to you're you're basically not using your uh, sense organs at all, or when you use them too much, like you know you're listening to too much music, you're talking too much, you're listening to things that you shouldn't be listening, things like that, or you use them, um, you know you uh, you kind of misuse your senses, wherein you're. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking things that you shouldn't be talking. You're listening to uh, ill. Uh, you know, like there are people who talk ill about everybody. Um, constantly listening to negative negativity, seeing negativity, all that will uh, change your manasika attributes, which are, you know, which, which, when everybody everybody is born with a, a kind of similar level of uh, sattva in them. As you grow older, you know, with the kind of actions, with the kind of life, with what you see, all that is what changes your sattva into rajas or tamas, right? So the more you are um, in control of your senses, the less likely you are to have a manasika or a sharirika problem, right? So, um, and of course, in, in, in certain people, it's just purva janma karmas, you know, whatever they've done in their past lives, whatever... Um, you know, all that can also contribute to uh, problems that you face in your present life. But the effect of that becomes lesser if you, um, you know, advocate more of sattva, you know, even, even simple things like eating sattvika food makes a lot of difference in your manas, makes a lot of difference in your nature and the way you behave in your attitude and so on, right? Um, if you've noticed people who eat a lot of meat, they tend to have more rajas in them. They tend to get angry faster. Um, um, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but you know, there's a saying, you are what you eat, right? So you eat a lot of meat, you have that animal tendency in you. You eat a lot of green, you eat a lot of sattvika food. It kind of in, increases that sattva guna in you. Now these are things which um, you have to try telling your clients because you're kind of trying to push them towards you know doing things that will help increase the sattva in them, which will uh, you know which will uh, you, you that's the balancing you do in terms of manasika doshas because unlike sharirika doshas where um, you know where you're actually um, you can give herbs to um, to change the vata, to change the kind of pitta, to change the cover and you know balance those things out. In manasika, the doshas, rajas, and tamas have they have the gunas also. Like you know, there are certain um, there are certain aspects of your doshas that you get from, like for instance, um, a certain amount of anger, a certain amount of you know the way you do your work. Um, you know, not being lethargic, all that. There are positive aspects also. But when we when we treat a person who has a manasika disorder, unlike what you do with the physical doshas, you're not kind of balancing the rajas and tamas just like that. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase the sattva. That is going to be the uh, that is going to be your most important treatment aspect. Whatever be the dosha, whether it's rajas or tamas, what we try to do is we're trying to increase the sattva in them. And to increase the sattva, we, you know, give them different aspects, like there are certain herbs that you can give. But um, just in general, there are three aspects of treatment when it comes to manasika disorders. Now, what we've seen today in, in, in terms of the, do, uh, the disorders and the conditions is a very 
is a very uh, basic thing you know it's it's just it's just like different categories that are there and that's a very basic level that we've learned we've uh, touched upon the most important aspects which is intoxication a state where the manas believes what it wants to believe a state where your mind is hallucinating your mind is you know is is misleading you is telling you you know this is how your life is you're basically in a different world right so these are like basic basic aspects you know certain things that would contribute to you having a manasika disorder now there are other aspects also like uh, people who have uh, who who are hysterical people um, who have clinical depression uh, you know off late i've had quite a few patients who who suffer from depression and you won't believe it uh, these are small these are young kids you know kids who go to school they are so stressed the kids i i i've in the last one month i've had at least five or six patients small children who have come for you know different kinds of problems like one person came because they were that that kid had um stomach issues you know that kid had um uh, had you know had ibs but that kid was just so badly stressed so badly stressed you know it, it's it's kind of sad and i think the the lifestyles have changed so badly oh my god i had i had a little kid who had insomnia too and i kept telling that child you know it, it took me some time i didn't know why the child couldn't just fall asleep and that kid was so scared because that kid was being uh, you know it's peer pressure and it starts at such a young age nowadays it's just really uh, sad and then and then i had one little kid who came who wouldn't talk in front of uh, his parents he would just sit quietly and he would just listen to everything and his parents just sat there and kept advising him in front of me so finally i asked him to leave the room which has become like my most favorite thing now to tell the parents to leave the room so the kid would talk but the minute the father and mother left the room the kid just the kid was just so scared because the parents um the parents wouldn't you know take anything other than a you know 100 out of 100 or a 10 out of 10 and the grades if the grades went a little below what it had to the kid would get whacked so that kid was so scared and that kid was i don't know the poor child you know really it's just strict parents and the kid was so scared to even say anything in front of them so anyway so that's become <laughs> yeah and nowadays i think after a point even you know kids who are trained like that they grow up when they grow up they have issues you know where they start thinking that whatever they do is not enough and that leads to so many many different kinds of problems so basically a uh, manasika treatment that you know with um in in ayurveda is um three aspects three things the first thing is deva vipashraya where you you know you opt for a divine therapy um ideally we have to do all the three put together first being deva vipashraya which is like you know you have mantras you have yagnas um you look at the person's horoscope and if there is some kind of a, a planetary dosha then you do something for that and you treat that and all that all that falls into this divine therapy or deva vipashraya therapy and then you give them these mantras that they can chant and all of that right the second thing is something called sattva vajaya which is more like a, a a psychotherapy you know where um you have this is the aspect where you do yoga you do pranayama yama niyama you try to control um the you try to control your breathing and ensure that your um, um you know your prana vata circulates freely and um, there is no blockage in your shrotas because when your channels are blocked that can even lead to your manasika uh, channel also has to be free and you know you need to let that open so that would be your second thing which is sattva vajaya kind of treatment and the third thing is yukti vipashraya which is more of a rational treatment where you give the necessary herbs and you give the necessary nutrition diet and you know the routine and you do your you know your and whatever you're learning you do that 
based on the dosha, based on the person's vikriti and prakriti and everything put together, right? So you, if you do all the three, then your you get better um, results. So. You know, another interesting aspect with these, um, with this, see, Vata, Pitta and Kapha, when you examine the Nadi, whether it's physical or mental or whatever, when you examine the Nadi, you get that first, you, you, you understand what the Vikriti is, you understand the, the imbalance. And 99% of the time, it is the same, same aspect that will affect the uh, the mind also it is the same dosha that you have to treat right sometimes it can be a physical uh, condition that leads to this um, to this manasika uh, vyadi that they suddenly come to you with so for because if you have to examine the manasika aspect of the nadi you need to you know it, it's a little more um, complicated where you need to keep you you first examine the three doshas then you need the second step would be examining the sub doshas and then you know it, it's like a step by step process so it would take a little time by the time you come to the manasika thing and then sometimes um, you know some people even get confused with the manasika uh, aspect you know where they're like um, they kind of get confused so if you don't know or if you're doubtful about how to get to the manasika aspect then what you need to do is you just look at the nadi because manasika aspect is like the sixth level of your nadi pariksha right so you look at the um, dosha and just blindly go by the dosha that you have seen in your um, in the, the the beginning right the first level of whatever nadi examination you have done just look at the doshas and give your treatment based on those doshas if you guys are able to reach till the sixth level of your nadi then great going you know great you can just you can um, give your treatment based on your findings of level six right so if there is more vata and if symptoms are also very vata related and um, if the prakriti, vikriti and all that is vata related, then your uh, medicines, your dravyas have to be sweet, um, sour, salty rasas, hot, virya, vata pacifying prabhava, just vata pacifying drugs like, you know, ashwagandha, brahmi, trifala, give that in the form of krita, it works very well. Shankar Pushpi, Jatha Mamsi, Sesame Oil, Tulsi, all these are great water pacifying drugs, right? So you can give water pacifying herbs for a person uh, with a vata thing. For Pitta, Rose, Mint, Coconut Oil, Shankar Pushpi, Tulsi, all these work well. And you can even do Chandana Lepa, where you apply sandalwood paste, um, you know, um, I, I actually had a, a person who I'm going to start doing dhara for, um, you know, in, in maybe next month, I, I'd start dhara for him. He has this, he is about 33 years old, if I remember, right? Um, he's got, he's a pitta and kapha prakriti. His, um, he's basically slightly on the obese side. And his problem is that um, he's got, he's got, a lot of stress he doesn't work he doesn't have one job so um, he he doesn't he does this ad advertisement uh, shooting and all that and he doesn't have one job that he sticks to he kind of um, you know he keeps changing his jobs and because it because he's in a field that doesn't really you know he, he doesn't have um, a stability as far as his career is concerned he spends a lot of time at home he is unmarried and uh, he's never been able to stick on to one relationship because after a point, um, you know, his, his main his main thing is that he's got um, a problem controlling his anger, right? And um, he's never been able to stick on with one relationship because uh, he's been, I think he, he's had two or three um, relationships so far and he's never been able to hold on to it because after a month or two, 
he starts having these um, you know he starts having these outbursts and um, then it it kind of doesn't work out for him so i'm going to start dhara for him and he is actually even though his prakriti he's he, he's slightly on the obese side and he's got a lot of kapha aspects he is um his manasika thing is very pitta you know he is um uh, there's a lot of rajas in him and this is a lot of pitta in him so for him i'm going to uh, i'm going to do this uh, therapy where i'm going to actually apply sandalwood paste and uh, i'm going to give him um, i'm going to give him dhara um i'm still kind of contemplating whether to do it with ghee or whether to use an oil based i'm not decided that yet but um i i actually gave him a, a sandalwood um, paste for a bit and you know um, he said that that's kind of i could actually feel the heat when i examined his nadi right so i've given him i gave him that with coconut oil i told him to apply the paste with coconut oil and uh, you apply it on his forehead and uh, his mother said he's kind of um, he's kind it's kind of helping him because it's kind of brought the heat down a bit so uh, when i start the dhara i'll actually ask him if i you know if he gives me permission to maybe film the dhara uh, thing or if i can share his uh, k sheet with you when i when i find, you know when i start doing his treatment i'll i'll do that i'll put that on the um, i put that on the group and also this just the application and all that is kind of helping him sleep better also so i'm sure with the dhara he'll be able to you know do much better and um, yeah so this is one person who i'm going to start my um, treatment for pretty soon oh my god you know that happens um, and uh, actually um, you know uh, monica didi when i came there i had a bad headache and um, she did something and she kind of released the pressure and um, she's 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 got magic on her fingers i've i don't know i just felt i just felt so light i have nobody has ever done that to me you know i i i can't do anything for myself and um, it was just it was just too good she just kind of she just kind of released that that stress and the minute she touched my neck she told me she's like why are you so stressed and she did something and i was feeling so light after that you know my headache disappeared and my my i felt so good after what she did for me and when people do that for somebody else this kind of happens you know even when you examine the nadi or you do a massage ah uh, you kind of you kind of seem to be attracting all that you know it's like some magnetic thing you kind of you kind of always have these people who come and oh oh my god some of your cases are kind of scary to yeah you you always have these people who come to you with Anyway, now the last thing is kapha. So when it is a kapha uh, dosha manasika thing, what you need to do is give brahmi, ginger, dry ginger, nasiyam, ashwagandha, tulsi, uh, you know, eucalyptus, and so on. You can you can decide what you want to do. Like you know, you can give it in the form of teas. You can give it as a ghee. You can give it. You can give a powder. You can you know mix it with something and give it. all that is up to you um so some of the herbs that we use uh quite often one is tulsi tulsi um it helps it it attacks as an uh, you know for any kind of respiratory uh, disorders you can use tulsi you can give tulsi in the form of a tea um you can give it with brahmi with ashwagandha and right? the basic aspect of the tulsi is it increases the sattva in a person right and it reduces the tamas and rajas so um for any even even for a physical condition you can um, you can advise tulsi 
for a manasika condition irrespective of what dosha is um vitiated you can actually give tulsi to that person maybe not lots of tulsi but just a simple thing like for instance um you know maybe two or three leaves of tulsi in some water uh, you can ask that person to keep sipping that water uh, you can even use an you can ask your client to use an infuser or tumbler or something and you know have like two or three leaves of holy basil in it and then pour water and just keep sipping it throughout the day that um, works really well for a person right um, you can even combine it with uh, you know with brahmi with ashwagandha you can combine it with cooling agents like rose for a pitta person and you can give that you can give a combination also so some of the medya rasayanas that uh, you can use the most commonly used medya rasayana is um brahmi you know brahmi in the form of of, of granules uh, that can be given you mix it in um, in in milk and that can be given um, actually even brahmi granules works great for little kids who have um who have difficulty memorizing things who have difficulty concentrating this brahmi granules can be given with milk and uh, that kind of um, you know it kind of helps them um, another thing is yashti madhu uh, which is licorice shankar pushpi uh, so the thing with uh, shankar pushpi is um it's a great great herb to give for um you know manasika disorders and so on but shankar pushpi reacts with certain antidepressants so if a person is on an antidepressant then you need to uh, ensure that you don't give shankar pushpi because for certain people certain medication this shankar pushpi kind of reacts with it so in that case you know you stay away from shankar pushpi and you know instead give brahmi which is a uh, a safer bet yeah and uh, when you have a client who you're giving a medha rasayana to and who you're treating for a manasika condition please make sure you got all their uh, medical history in front of you uh, it becomes very important because um, if you give them something that say for instance there's this one um, uh, her, one medicine called manasa mitra vatakam right it's a pill and that pill actually Uh, helps you fall asleep so it's like a mild sedative that we have in ayurveda right now if a person is al- already on an uh, on a medicine on a sedative uh, and if they're having say one tablet at night it might be a very mild dose it can be you know um, it can be 0.25 or it can be 0.5 or whatever if they are on a sedative and you give them manasa mitra vatakam it will actually make them f- sleep longer and if they're on a higher dose of the medicine and if they kind of have over you know dose themselves then that can become a problem for you so ensure that you have the medical history in front of you you have all the medicines that they've had and then uh, prescribe your medicines accordingly so if it is a person who is on a sedative and you don't want to um, you know give them any and you don't want to give them a sedative what you can do is give them whatever medicine you're giving in the form of a ghee right so there's this one ghee called kalyanaka gritam which can be given for various manasa disorders and um, that ghee works great so you can give that ghee or you can even give brahmi gritam you know you you give it in the form of a gritam and um, ask them to have it with warm water that works well so i had this one uh, one patient who came to me who had ocd right and um, uh, she was a very interesting uh, patient that i had she had she loved having guests over you know she liked hosting she liked having people over but at the same time she got irritated the minute they came home and she gave them something to drink so say for instance you went to a house she would give you coffee to drink and the minute you you drank a little bit of your coffee and you kept the glass down you know your cup down she would come take it and she would clean the entire place so uh, you know and um, and then she had a problem because she she actually uh, started feeling very low and sad because people didn't like going to her house because they found it extremely um, you know they found it very 
kind of suffocating to sit there because the minute they had something or they did something she come and clean up after them so i had this uh, this person who came and then she started getting depressed because people wouldn't you know go spend time with her and she loved having people over but she was a severe case of ocd and i actually gave her this kalyanaka gritam half teaspoon of kalyanaka gritam with warm water um so when you basically you know you have a person who has ocd you can't completely reverse that condition or anything you know being clean having certain things that's how it works for them so you can't completely reverse that but uh, this gritam kind of helped uh, calm her down and it kind of she was getting into a clinical depression because people wouldn't go there and um she's doing well now she still she's she still does have her bit of ocd but um she's she's you know she's become better from the state of cleaning after all her guests and um, you know pulling the mugs out and washing it and drying it and putting it so she'd always be cleaning when her guests were at home she wouldn't spend time with them because she's busy tidying up the place so um now her husband says she's become a, she's become a little better but um i gave her this medicine with uh, just half a teaspoon of this gritam with uh, water you know it, it kind of worked pretty well also this uh, uh, apart from your uh, manasika thing this this gritam works well for people who have loss of memory right so um just like how brahmi granules and brahmi gritam helps this kalyanaka gritam also works pretty well for people who have um, who, who have loss of memory so then you have ashwagandha ashwagandha can be given in the form of ashwagandha rishtam it can be given as a lehyam it can be given um as a churnam if you're giving it as a churnam as a powder you can mix it with um uh, with the um, milk and give it you see it, it's even there in this manasa mitra vatikam uh, it's there in brahmi vati and uh, just ashwagandha uh, you, you know um you can actually even find um tablets with, with just ashwagandha and nothing else in it just ashwagandha vati without anything else in it so how do you know that it's just ashwagandha is this can you see this adi over here this adi means etc means there are other herbs also in them so what you need to look for is instead of looking at ashwagandha di churnam you can just look for ashwagandha churnam right ashwagandha churna means only ashwagandha and if you find that the label says ashwagandha di churna then there are other ingredients also in it so keep a watch out for that right this this adi means etc means so if there's anything like you say ashwagandha uh, ashwagandha di whatever that means there are other things in it right so most of your arishtams and most of your asavams would have this adi in it means there are more um, ingredients to it so with arishtams it doesn't matter but with churnams if you want to give just that one specific churnam just be a little cautious about the name that you give the next thing is brahmi brahmi is is great for um, you know for most of the uh, manasika doshas it can be given uh, in the form of a ghee it can be given as a tablet it's there in the saraswata arishtam um uh, so the saraswata arishtam is actually uh, there are two kinds of arishtams available one with gold in it and one without gold in it so um the one that you need to prescribe for a manasika avastha especially if you're practicing anywhere other than in india is the one without gold in it so um you know you you, you need to make sure that you read the labels before you um, give your Uh, your medicines to it uh, to a person right and then and then there are some of these bhasmas also that are available for manasa disorders and manasika conditions so um make sure that you don't prescribe anything with metals or you know with with minerals in them because uh, i don't think you guys can do that so some of the nerve and tonics that you have is tulsi you know you can give it as a tea brahmi with ghee ashwagandha with ghee shankar pushpi with warm water or ghee bringaraj either the oil or you know tablet using these oils like bhala ashwagandha there's one oil called bhala ashwagandha di so if you use a combination of bhala and ashwagandha bhala ashwagandha di so 
for people who have um, you can you can even use that you know for for head massage for people who have a lot of stress uh, you can give a dhara with just that um you even for people who who have this general debility and who are stressed um and who have um, body pain and you know who who have very weak uh, weak limbs when they can't really walk well and you know when they have that weakness in their in their limbs you can you can do a massage with this balashwaganda the it works extremely well for that uh maha chandanadi on the scalp when you know there's a lot of heat and there's a lot of pitta you can do a massage with maha chandanadi it works great so um <clears throat> oil according to whatever dosha it is you choose your oil and a gentle massage and you know even even dhara with oil so there's this dhara can be done with um, with other ingredients also like you can use a kashayam and do dhara um, you can use um, there's this uh, there's something called a kanji water right so it's like um, it's it's like a little fermented water that um, It's, I think it's called Khan. I don't think you can buy it. You need to make it. So um, there are a lot of stuff that's put into it. And um, yes, you can. You can, or you can even add uh, licorice to the to the. Uh, you know, you can um, add licorice because that will that won't take away from the uh, medicine anything. But uh, if the ghee is already prepared. it it will be difficult for you to add something to the ghee so what you will have to do is you give the ghee and then you know you give them a um, licorice to follow or maybe um maybe the powder of licorice that is there you can give that as an anupana with the ghee that that can that will that won't take away from the ghee its uh, properties if you just add plain sugar on top of the ghee and mix it up it won't really mix well because um you know the ghee is already made but you can give something you can give something um sweet you can even give a uh, sugar candy right a very small uh, a very small thing called kalkand a sugar candy you get it in these indian stores a very small piece of that you can give for a, for a small child and then aroma therapy burning incense sticks so you know uh, using essential oils like tulsi citrus sandalwood rose eucalyptus oil all that some of the other herbs that you have arjuna arjuna can be given as arishtam as gritam uh, it's there in uh, parthya the arishtam partha is another name for arjuna um, there's something called arjuna kshira pakam which is a preparation of arjuna with milk and uh, that can be given it's a it's it's something that uh, works as a as a cardio tonic it kind of helps your uh, heart and all of that then there's jaha mamsi um which you can which is there in kadiradi gutika which is there in um bala thailam in madhuparnyadi thailam and uh, various other things divya mukta vati and all that um the only thing is like i keep telling you every vati every uh, every combination um when there when there's a combination of um, ingredients in a particular vati not all companies today use the exact combination that's mentioned in classical textbooks so uh, please be careful when you um, you know when you're prescribing these vatis make sure that if you're prescribing say maharishi's vati make sure you know the ingredients that go into that particular vati so in case um, you know you you want somebody to have say ashwagandha and you're not able to find ashwagandha vati or ashwagandha churnam you can prescribe something that has ashwagandha in it but for that some of the classical preparations are not followed you know to the text so you ensure that you know what ingredient goes into the uh, tablets and all that of whatever you're prescribing so for people who suffer from insomnia which is one of the most common conditions that um, you will see as an ayurvedic practitioner people coming and telling you they can't sleep and they don't want to um have medicines or sedatives for that is insomnia so you can give an oil massage with ashwagandha with sandalwood with uh, mahabringaraja oil with maha chandanadi with sesame oil based on the kind of uh, dosha that is there um ashwagandha churnam at night with a little bit of milk uh, will help you fall asleep um tulsi tea 
and uh, another thing that really really helps people i don't know if um, you will get this but uh, buffalo milk it works extremely well for people who have um, who have insomnia right so just buffalo's milk with a little bit of sugar a little bit of sugar will help you fall asleep and apart from that uh manasa mitra vatakam helps you fall asleep if you if they really want a medicine for that right like i told you for people who yes these massages do work um if a person is having sleeping pills and still unable to sleep then you you know they need to uh, you need to ch- you need to ensure that either there's a change in the sleeping pill that's prescribed or uh, you know you uh, you can do a dhara with oil that will help them fall asleep but don't give them manasa mitra vatakam or don't give them anything internal like the, that has a shankar pushpi base or anything if they already having sleeping pills um changing the sleeping pills can help them and so again for allergies these are some of the uh, herbs that you can use based on the dosha for vata licorice hari taki jatha mansi tulsi for pitta coriander amla ki kalame uh, sandalwood oil rose oil for kapha trika to vassa etc the thing is if you if you have a massage um, license if you have a massage therapist license you can ens- make sure that you have uh, you know at least one of the oils that is required for each dosha so based on the 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 kind of dosha and the kind of client you dealing with you, you know you, you know that you have something for every dosha kind and something uh, that will help them if you have a therapy license that's a great thing for you guys to do um uh, and it's easier to do these head massages and all that compared to navrakiri and compared to you know the panchakarma uh, treatment and i don't think you guys can do all the panchakarmas there either so now for, for energy these are some of the uh, things that you can do um amla ki rasayana for pitta ashwagandha rasayana um shavana prash rasayana agastya rasayana brahmi gritam full body abhyangam amapachanam if there is ama then you know whatever herbs you need for amapachanam for headaches this is another very common thing and this is something if you have a massage therapy license and this is a great way to um, you know this is a great thing that you can do great way to make money also uh, shirodhara and head massage um you don't have you know when you do a whole body massage it's a lot of energy that you're um giving to your patient to your client and you kind of in the process of massaging and all that you kind of absorb a lot of uh, their uh, doshas and all of that so head massage is a relatively easier thing to do so based on the kind of dosha you can choose the oil like so vata these are some of the oils that you can use nutmeg oil brahmi oil jatha mansi for pitta aloe vera oil brahmi oil rose uh, sandalwood oil for kapha trika to eucalyptus camphor oil and so on so these are some of the herbs that you can use and some of the uh, the treatment aspects um, that we have right do you guys have any doubts in these uh, manasika in, in the slide in the presentation that we've done today any doubts no all right guys thank you so much for listening see you next week bye bye